Today for Mouse Trap Monday, I'm going to try something a little different. Usually we test out traps for mice, rats, squirrels, all kinds of rodents that cause problems. Well, if you look in the yard here, you'll see all these piles of dirt. Now, moles have moved in and are digging up everywhere, and I want to get rid of these. So I thought I might as well start testing out mole and gopher traps as well. And this is the first one I'm going to test. It's called the gopher hawk. And I really like this because you don't have to dig up your yard. Uh, it's really easy to use, and it says it works both for moles and gophers. Now, first you need to know what you're trying to trap. These are mole holes, and then I also have a problem with gophers in the field. So this will work on both of them. I'm going to post a video to show you the difference between moles and gophers and how I know that moles are digging up the yard. But what we're going to do is we're going to take this gopher hawk out of the box, show you how it works, and then go catch some gophers and moles. Here's what the gopher hawk trap looks like out of the box. It comes in two pieces. We have the actual snare here and then a tool to help you get it in the ground. And this back part comes off. Here's a probe that you can use to find the tunnel. And then once you find the tunnel, you use this here, the instructions say to insert it, and then do a circular motion until you have a hole big enough to insert the snare. Now this is the snare. You can see a powerful spring here that provides the force for the trap. And there's a specific way of setting this where you don't want to bend the snares down here. Above ground it doesn't matter, but below ground you can really mess this up, so you have to do it in order. But I'll show you how it works above ground. You basically push this forward or pull that back, and that opens. You see a trigger there, and then a little three-part wire snare. I'm going to show you how that sets off with Snowflake, our finger puppet mouse. Um, I'll do a close-up on that. But basically, you make the hole, you insert this in, set it, and then there's a tunnel there. You don't want your finger in there when that goes off. That would really hurt. But when they trip the trigger there, the snare pulls up because of the spring, and then you kill the gopher. So I'm going to do a close-up of how this works. So you have to use your imagination a little bit, but envision a tunnel here. This is underground, and in the tunnel opening are these three snares and the trigger in the middle. The gopher will come through his tunnel, and as he encounters this trigger here, he pushes it, and it comes slamming down, and that looks like it would be a dead gopher. So let's go show you how we set this up. I'll show you the tunnels, how I find it, how I insert it, and then we'll see if we can catch an actual gopher. Now opposed to the mole holes, which look like a little volcano, what I have here are some actual gopher mounds. You can tell because it has that crescent shape with the plug in the middle. You can see how they dig from an angle, and that's a pretty big hole. So I'm gonna set up our snare and see if we can't get this gopher who's actively digging. He was just digging this a few minutes ago. I saw the dirt flying. So hopefully he comes right back and we can get him with our gopher hawk snare. So I found what looks like a really good gopher tunnel and we got our trap all set. So let's wait a little while and then come back and see if the spring is sprung and then we can dig out a gopher. So this is exactly what I wanna see when we check a gopher trap in the morning. That spring is sprung. You can see that yellow indicator line and when you pull up on this, it doesn't come up easily. That means we caught a gopher. So let's dig this up with a shovel and see what it looks like. There's the tunnel there, and there's the gopher. Here's the gopher we got in the gopher hawk snare trap. To release them, you just pull back the spring there. And these are called pocket gophers, and these pockets on their cheeks are almost like uh, kangaroo pouches on either side. They're huge. They hold a ton of uh, food there. Right there in the pockets, they can bring it back to the place where they store their food. So they just go along digging and eating. They can do a ton of damage, and this gopher hawk worked well on him. Now this gopher hawk trap only works as well as you can set it in the tunnel. If you don't get this in the tunnel just right, you're not going to catch these guys. So this is a tool that works great if you use it properly. You just have to figure out how to get them in those tunnels. Now I have a problem with moles as well in my yard. So next we'll go try this out with the moles and I'll show you in detail how to set that up and how to catch the animals. Here's a mound that I saw show up about a week ago and seeds are already starting to germinate in there. I know on the other end of this run there's way more active uh, mounds. So I'm not going to set it on this side of the run. I'm going to follow these down the yard and set up my traps on the dirt that was fresh from last night. So I'll go show you that. So here's one of the freshest mounds that I found and it actually branches. There's a run that goes that way, a run that goes that way, and a run that goes that way. So this looks like a good intersection. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take out the probe and start sticking it into the ground. And you can really feel when you hit that tunnel. It's hard and then you hit a pocket that's no resistance at all. So once I find a really good tunnel, 
I'm going to flip it around, stick this end in, and make it bigger with that circular motion. Right there, that's good. So we're just going to work that. We're compacting the sides there for our snare to fit into. That looks like I have a really good pathway right down to the tunnel. I'm right on the bottom there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take our snare. You don't set it. You stick that down there. If you set it beforehand or push down, you can break those wires. But what you do is you actually put your hand on here and pull it up instead of pushing down. Clicks into place. I went out and checked our trap the next morning. Nothing. The trap was still set. Now this is three days later. I thought I'd let it sit and that spring is sprung. This trap went off and it doesn't pull up. It means something's down there. The nice thing about this trap is you don't have to make a big hole in your yard to set it, but I'm gonna dig a big hole now. You can see part of the tunnel here. Look at that. We got a mole there. It came right in and that snare went on its head. I am really impressed with how well this gopher hawk snare trap performed. To release the mole you just push the spring forward, give it a little shake there and he comes on out. These are such interesting animals. They're not rodents like mice, rats, and squirrels. They eat insects and grubs and worms. They're carnivorous and they have a big snout here that they can smell their prey. Sharp teeth and look at those big claws on those front paws. They can dig so much dirt in a short amount of time. They do so much damage to your yard. And this fur is some of the softest fur I've ever felt. They almost have no eyes. They're tiny little eyes. They don't need to see because they live in the dark underground. And this gopher hawk snare trap works great for catching them. I got more moles to take care of in my yard and I have some other traps to try out. So stay tuned because I'm going to show you how to catch moles with a variety of different traps.